So welcome to the A Brief History channel as we look through the front pages of historical newspapers. We are looking at September 4th, 1939 and we have the Daily Mirror here. And it says Britain's first day of war. Churchill is new Navy chief. So the inevitable has happened. Britain and Germany are at war. So the article reads, Britain and Germany have been at war since 11 o'clock yesterday morning. France and Germany have been at war since yesterday at 5 p.m. A British war cabinet of nine members was set up last night. Mr. Winston Churchill, who was the first Lord of the Admiralty when Britain last went to the war, returns to that post. What I find really interesting is how there's specific times at which war is declared. So I find that quite um, interesting. Um, and then the article lists who the full war cabinet is. So you have Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain, Chancellor of the Exchequer, Sir John Simon, Foreign Secretary, Viscount Halifax, which obviously, if you've seen The Darkest Hour, plays a big part in the phony war or the beginning of the war, um, just after the phony war where um, the Allies are attacked and France sort of capitulates. So I'm sure that will come in time with these newspaper pages. Defence Minister Lord Chatfield, First Lord, Mr Winston Churchill, Secretary for War, Mr Leslie Hoare, Belcher, Secretary for Air, Sir Kingsley Wood, Lord Privy Seal, Sir Samuel, Samuel Hoare, and Minister Without Portfolio, Lord Hankey. So there are other ministerial changes. Mr Eden becomes Dominion Secretary. Sir Thomas Inskip goes to the House of Lords as Lord Chancellor. Lord Stanhope, ex-First Lord, becomes Lord President of the Council. Sir John Anderson is the Home Secretary, and the Minister of Home Security is a new title. None of these is in the Cabinet, which is restricted to the Big Nine. They are the men who they these are the men who will be responsible for carrying on the war, but Mr. Eden is to have special access to the cabinet. The Liberal Party explained last night that although Sir Archibald Sinclair being offered a ministerial post, the party decided at that moment not to enter the government. So um sort of the subheading is Petrol will be rationed. The first meeting of the new war cabinet took place last night. Mr. Churchill was the first to leave and the crowd broke into a cheer as he walked out. Mr. Hoare Mr. Belcher was driven away by a woman's chauffeur in uniform. The Premier went to Downing Street, sorry, the Premier went from Downing Street to Buckingham Palace where he stayed with the King for three quarters of an hour. It was announced last night that as from September 16th, all petrol will be rationed. In the meantime, all car, car owners are asked not to use their cars more than vitally necessary. So the king also um, gave a message to his people. It's on the it's on the front page of the paper. So the king to his people, <clears throat> the task will be hard. There may be dark days ahead, but we can only do the right as we see the right and prevently co commit our cause to God. If one and all we keep resolutely faithful to, ready for whatever service or sacrifice it may demand, then God's help we shall prevail. These words were broadcast by the king last night and to every household in the country a copy of his message bearing his own signature. Fiscamy will be sent to as a permanent record. The speech is on page three. So <clears throat> I think using movie knowledge here, this is the um, speech that was made at the end of the king's speech. Um, and it was his first wartime broadcast. On the left hand side, it says Poles attack. Polish troops are fighting on German territory according to a Warsaw message. A Polish counter-attack pushed back the Germans and penetrated East Prussia near Dutch Elua, it was claimed. The Polish embassy in London described a Nazi report that troops had cut that uh, cut the corridor as entirely forced. Later, according to the Havas Agency, the Polish radio announced that Poland had retaken the frontier station at Zabzin. The German news agency claimed that Nazi troops operating on the 7th Front had taken the town of Radomansky, Radomansky north of the industrial region round Katowice. 
is about 40 miles from the Polish frontier. The, le- the Poles' latest estimate of casualties in German air raids was issued last night in Warsaw. It's alleged that 1,500 people were killed or injured in German air bombardment of open towns and villages during Friday and Saturday. A considerable portion of the victims were women and children. Apologise if any of the town names are not exact. Um, South London accent. Struggling with those, but um, I'm really enjoying reading these newspapers. I hope you're liking the videos. Be really grateful if you could subscribe to the channel, and I will um, I will keep uh, reading them.